In today's video, I'll be going over many valuation metrics that you can use to evaluate a company. I'll be explaining them and telling you how to use them. What is up, guys? So I wanted to make a video uh, today just about some of the important metrics that you can use to evaluate a company. Uh, and so I'm just going to use all of the ones listed on Morningstar, and I'll explain to you uh, what those are and what to look for in them. Um, and so this is definitely more targeted toward beginner investors who are just starting to learn how to evaluate a company. Um, but also uh, any more experienced investor who just wants a refresher, uh, it will, should also be helpful for them. Um, so I'm just looking at Apple's Morningstar page since it's a large company that pretty much everyone knows about. Uh, so I'll just start off with price to earnings. Um, so pretty much this is the share price over the earnings per share uh, of over the last uh, 12 months. So that's what the TTM is. That's trailing 12 months. So like I said, this is just what the price is of the stock over the earnings. So this pretty much tells you how long um, it will take for the company to return the price uh, that you paid um, for the stock in earnings. So uh, they won't necessarily be returning all of their earnings, but it's pretty much just telling you what premium you're paying on their yearly earnings to um, to purchase the stock. So for high growth stocks, you're going to see a higher price to earnings because people are expecting their uh, earnings to grow a lot more in the future versus a slower growth stock. You'd see a lower price to earnings typically because people aren't expecting as high of a growth rate. Um, and so I tend to look for price to earnings under 15 or 16, but I'll make a lot of exceptions to that. So if I'm just, um, if you're looking at Apple, it's got an 18.1. Um, and so that's a pretty good price to earnings on a company that is as big as Apple is. And then also uh, compared to the industry is an 18.9. So with price to earnings, what you're going to want to do is compare it to the industry because some industries trade at uh, different valuations. Um, so you can't really compare, say, Procter & Gamble to Amazon because they're just two very different companies. Uh, and so you are going to use price to earnings uh, relatively loosely uh, to value a company, but it is uh, still a uh, good way to look at just um, what uh, multiple you're paying on the earnings. And so it's pretty uh, important in that sense. Um, and so we'll move on now to price to book which is pretty much the price of the stock over the book value per share. So the book value is how much money the company would receive if it were to liquidate everything that it had. Uh, and, and so pretty much it tells you how much money uh, you would expect to get back pretty much if the company went bankrupt. So you are paying for Apple right now six times the money that you would uh, theoretically get back if the company went bankrupt. Um, and so this isn't always a perfect metric for evaluating um how much money you would get because book value includes goodwill and other intangible um, balance sheet items that you might necessarily not get anything from if the company were to go bankrupt, but it's still uh, good to give you a sense of how much um, or what premium it's trading to uh, in relation to how much money you would receive if the company were to go bankrupt. I don't necessarily uh, use this number a ton. Uh, it's just good to glance at it uh, and normally compare it to the industry average. Um, but I think uh, you're better off using uh, price to earnings and other things like that to value the company. Um, price to book maybe would be good if you're buying some junkier stocks that you're uh, worried could potentially go out of business. Then you might want to start worrying about price to book more or if you're really going for super um, high value picks uh, and doing some like plays on that, but otherwise I tend to use earnings and revenue and stuff more. So for here you have price to sales over the tra uh, trailing 12 months. So it's pretty much the exact same thing as price to earnings, but with sales instead. Um, and so this is good just to see how much sales a company is generating. I think I tend to look at uh, earnings more than sales, but sales are good to look at. Um, if the company is either uh, struggling with margins due to like one-time events and you're expecting their margins to go up, you can use that to help you uh, calculate their um, future earnings as their margins go up and things like that. And I'll explain margins more when I get to them down here. So then revenue growth, uh, three-year average, is pretty much how much the company is growing its revenue over the last three years. Uh, you're going to want to look for a positive number for sure. You don't want anything uh, negative, and that's not necessarily to say that you don't want to invest in a company that has negative revenue growth, but it's showing that the company is not doing as well and is starting to shrink uh, in term uh, instead of grow, which you're looking to 
generally be investing in growing companies. And so net income growth is the same thing as revenue growth, but with the earnings of the company instead of the revenue. So with this, again, it's good to look for a positive number and a, lump, uh, a really high number will show you that it's a high growth company and a lower number, um, like say five, will tell you that it's growing pretty well and it's uh, steadily growing, but not at a super fast pace. Um, but like I said, you just want to use that um, to de determine how well the company is growing. So the operating margin is calculated by taking the uh, amount of money that the company received from selling their goods uh, minus the cost of the goods sold. So then the net margin is um, pretty much uh, the same as the operating margin except for it factors in overhead. So this is actually telling you how much of the revenue is going to earnings. Uh, per share and so like I said factors in overhead so this is telling you that uh, on all of their revenue Apple is earning 20% uh, of their revenue uh, as earnings so then the return on assets and return on equity I'll start with the return on assets but their metrics of evaluating how efficiently a company is using their assets or equity so return on assets um, is calculated by dividing the trailing 12 months earnings over the total assets of the company. Uh, and so like I said, this just tells you how well management is using their assets. Um, and so I usually just uh, compare this to the industry average because you're going to get different return on assets in different industries, especially if some require uh, lots of assets to run their company and some don't require quite as many assets, you're going to be getting different numbers. So just compare it to the industry average uh, in most cases. And so the return on equity over the trailing 12 months is the same thing as return on assets, but instead with shareholders equity. And so this is telling you how efficiently management is using a company's uh, shareholders, or sorry, how efficiently a company is using the shareholders equity. And so I also tend to compare this to industry average more than anything. And so finally, uh, the debt to equity is uh, a metric of how leveraged a company is. So it is calculated by taking the total debt of the company and dividing it by the shareholders' equity. Uh, and so this is good to look at because it can tell you uh, how much debt they're using to finance growth. Um, and then also it can tell you how leveraged a company is. And so high debt tends to make it more difficult for a company to grow because they're going to be needing to make, going to need to make debt payments um, and stuff like that. Uh, so those were just um, some of the basic ways that you can evaluate a company um, I can also make a video on some of the more um, complicated uh, valuation metrics that you might see on uh, a different website that has uh, more of them, but these are just some of the basic important ones that you can use. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.